I'd like to call the regular monthly meeting to order with everybody to please rise for the prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the positive start to our new semester. We are grateful for the renewed enthusiasm of our teachers and we welcome the academic challenges that lie ahead because we are united in our efforts to meet the needs of all of our students. Help us to make good decisions this evening that benefit our students and guide us in each of our future endeavors. These things we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Ms. Tyson, would you lead us in our flag, please? Yes. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Foche, roll call, please. Ms. Acevedo? Here. Mr. Campbell? Here. Mr. Egan? Here. Ms. Jackson? Here. Mr. Moyne is not with us. Ms. Dysart? Here. Mr. England? Here. Mr. Long? Here. Mr. Smith is not with us. Mr. Warner? Here. And Ms. White? Here. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Foche. I'd like to mention a couple of things. Um, Ms. Lemoyne tonight is not with us at the present time. She's going to be a crowded come to the meeting later on, but tonight she's receiving an award from the Chamber of Commerce for Citizen of the Year. So we'd like to give her a round of applause, which, which is well deserved. Now, Mr. Shelton Smith, we do want to keep his his family in our prayers. His, his young child's at Children's Hospital at the present time, so he won't be with us tonight also. So, But I want to take a point of, a point of privilege, uh, if we could just have a moment of silence for we have a a longtime employee of ours that passed away, Mr. Louis Bolton. Uh, he was a terrific person and he did the great things for our school system. So we'll just have a moment of silence. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, and we'd like to just keep his family in our prayers. Okay? Thank you. Okay, um, the next thing on the, the agenda is election of officers. Now let me just go over that for a, a minute with, with the board and that. Um, it's board policy that we, uh, uh, you can only serve as president and vice president for two years. So this is my second year, so I cannot be president for next year. So I have to step down. So tonight we're going to um, elect a new president tonight for the St. Bernard Parish School Board. So, uh, so right now I'm going to open the floor for nominations. Mr. Long. I'd like to <coughs> nominate Mrs. Diana Dysart for president. Okay. Anybody else? A second? Okay, fine. Any other nominations? Being none, do we have a second? Nomination, be close. Thank you. Do I have a second for that? I'll second. Okay, we have a, a motion and second. All in favor? Uh, uh, any opposed? No? Okay. Any objections? <laughs> no? No objections? Congratulations, Ms. Dysart. <laughs> <laughs> let me just say this. Let me just say this. I, you know, I, I, I failed to mention, I just want to thank the board members for the past two years to have you for your support. And I want to thank Ms. Dysart for being by my side for the last two years because she really was a great help to me. So uh, I thank y'all and congratulations, Ms. Dysart. Thank you, Mr. England, and thank you, board members. I appreciate the um, vote of confidence, and I will look forward to working with each and every one of you as we go along the next year and, um, and with the superintendent and administration, and I do appreciate the opportunity. And, um, you know, as Mr. England said, we worked as a team, all of us, mm -hmm. and we continue to work together in unison for the betterment of all of our children. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Dyson. Take <laughs> Thank you, Mr. England. Okay, at this time we need to um, elect a vice president because um, I was vice president and um, now uh, and I held the office for two years. So, are the nominations open um, to anyone for vice president at this time? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Long. <laughs> I'll nominate Mr. Clifford England for vice president. Okay, there's a motion by, by Mr. Long to nominate Mr. England. Is there a second? Second by Ms. White. Any discussion? Is there a motion to close the nominations? So moved. There's a motion by Mr. Campbell, seconded by um, Ms. Jackson. Are there any objections? 
All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Congratulations, Mr. Engel. Thank you, Ms. Dyson. We'll be yeah. together as a team. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I just want to thank you, all the board members and uh, to give me the opportunity again to serve as vice president and work along the side of Ms. Dysart because uh, right now we do have a great board here and I uh, appreciate everything that's being done for our children of St. Bernard Parish and that's the reason why we sit here tonight, you know, to, uh, to take care of our students. So thank you, Ms. Dysart. Thank you, Mr. England. Okay, next item. Well, you oh, to, you want to switch? Me? Okay. Take a minute, right? huh? Oh, you want to stay like that? I want to just stay like that. Okay, that's, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. We'll wait. All righty. Next item on the agenda is a motion motion to authorize the newly elected school board president to sign on school board checking accounts on behalf of the board. So moved. There's a motion on Mr. Warner. Is there a second? Okay. Second by Mr. Campbell. Any discussion? There being none, please cast your votes. Motion passes nicely. Thank you, Ms. Foche. Next item is a motion to approve the following minutes. The regular monthly meeting of September 24th, 2019, as published on October 25th, 2019. Is there a motion? Ms. So White? Oh, Ms. Ms. White makes a motion, seconded by Mr. Long. Any discussion? There being none, please cast your votes. Motion passes 9-0. Thank you. Next item is a motion to approve the resolution stating the date, time, and place for the 2020. Um, 20, 20, oh, I'm sorry. I'm moving along too fast. Okay. Item 7, motion to incorporate the minutes of the January 2020 General Committee meeting into the minutes of the January 2020 regular monthly meeting. Is there a motion on the floor at this time? Motion on Mr. England. Is there a second? Second on Ms. Jackson. Any discussion? There being none, please cast your votes. Motion passes 9-0. Thank you. Next item is a motion to approve the resolution stating the date, time, and place for the 2020 General Committee and regular monthly meetings. There was a recommendation by the committee. Is there a motion at this time? I'll make the motion. motion by Mr. Warner. Is there a second? Second it. Um, any discussion, Mr. Long? No, just uh, I, I didn't. I didn't think you had a second. Oh yes, a second okay. about Miss Acevedo. I'm okay. sorry. Any discussion? And I don't think we read these into the no, uh, minutes did, at the committee it. meeting, right. so we'll have to read them into the minutes. I don't think we did. No, did we? We no. We didn't mention certain dates. That's yeah. All. Okay. So the resolution reads as such. Whereas Title 17 requires local school boards to hold at least one regular monthly meeting and that public written notice of meetings be given. And whereas Act 707 of the 1977 Louisiana Legislature exempts local school boards from having to give written notice of each regular monthly meeting by adopting a resolution establishing the date, time, and place of regular meetings. And whereas the Louisiana School Boards Association has recommended that all school boards in the state of Louisiana adopt a resolution to this effect and that the resolution be given appropriate written notice Therefore, be it resolved that the St. Paul Parish School Board hereby establishes 6 o'clock p.m. on the second Tuesday of each month for the calendar year 2020 to meet as a committee of the whole for a general committee meeting and 6 p.m. on the fourth Tuesday of each month with the following exceptions. February 18, 2020 for its regular monthly meeting, May 19, 2020 for its general committee meeting, November 17 for its regular monthly meeting, December 15, 2020 for its regular monthly meeting. And be it resolved that said meetings will be conducted in the St. Bernard Parish School Board Office, 200 East St. Bernard Highway, Chalmette, Louisiana, and that an agenda will be posted 24 hours prior to a meeting and be it further resolved that written public notice will be given at least 24 hours in advance of any change in a day, time, and place of regular meetings. And be it resolved further that this resolution will be posted in the St. Bernard Parish School Board Office and that copies will be forwarded to the local newspapers. Okay, we did have a motion and we had a second on this item. Any discussion at this time? 
And we did discuss this at the committee meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, there being no discussion, please cast your votes. Motion passes, 9 zero. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Vocher. Next item, item nine, is the review of personal changes for 2020. Um, in your folder or the changes since our last meeting, for informational purposes, there is one item that does require a motion with the requested leave without pay at the bottom of the um, form. But mm -hmm. I, I would like to bring your attention to um, we did have one of our teachers pass away as well at uh, from Merrill Elementary School, so maybe at this time we could also take a moment of silence for Ms. Uh, Shalanda Joseph. Okay, if we would, a moment of silence, please. And our deepest sympathies go out to the family of Shalanda Joseph. Okay, and we do need a motion, correct, Ms. Loche? For the leave, For without, the leave pay. without pay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this, okay, there's a motion by Mr. Warner. Is there a second? Second. Second, okay. Second it. Um, I had a question on it. Is it just for a year, or is there a time It's period? a short time. I'm sorry? It's a short time. I go into more into detail at another point. With you. Okay, okay. Okay, there's a motion by Mr. Warner and a second by Mr. Campbell. Is there any further discussion or questions about it? Okay, there being none, please cast your votes. Motion passes, 9 0. Okay. Thank you. Okay, next item is the consideration of industrial tax exemption application number 201. 80237 and we had several people who would like to to um, come before us and speak and first we have Mr. Stephen Grzynski with Shamit Refining. Good evening. Uh, I thank you for hearing me. Um, I've talked to a few of you in the past and my, uh, what, what I have to say is not going to change all that much. Uh, we, PBF Energy, bought this Shellmet refinery in 2015. Um, it was a failing refinery. Uh, Two-thirds of the refinery was running. One-third of the refinery was shut down. PBF um, has put $550 million into the refinery since 2015 trying to make it a viable operation. We've t taken a lot of the equipment that was shut down, started back up, and is now running. Uh, we have, there was 500 employees and 400 contractors in the refinery when we bought it. The refinery now has over 600 employees, and for the year 2019 has had over 850 contractors in, in, in the refinery. Um, we still haven't made it a viable operation, meaning that we're still in the, in the red as far as a profitability from the refinery. As of, out of that $550 million, the, ref the refinery has only returned back to the corporation $400 million so far. So the refinery is still in the red about $150 million. For the year of 2019, the refinery um, put $150 million of capital alone in that refinery. And only, and our EBITDA was only forty-six million dollars, with a, uh, a uh, free cash flow of only six point one million dollars. So we're still looking to make it a viable operation, and we're hoping with all the investments we made in it going forward, we can we can do that. And for that last big investment we had, which is the uh, Coker unit and the associated units with that, which are still yet to start up, is what we're asking for the tax exemption for. One of the commitments that I made to the community and still stands and will stand is, is hiring local talent, local people. And we've since partnershiped up with Nunez Colleges. What we're, uh, we're getting ready to hire a P-TECH class out of that school for 15 operators with, within the next month, month and a half. So that, you know, my commitment still stands and will stand no matter what happens here today. So thank you very much for listening to me. And as you can thank see, you. Um, a lot of your local St. Bernard 
is here to cheer me on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we want, want to reserve our questions for um, for any of the speakers until after? Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Next, we have to speak is uh, Jimmy. Excuse me if I mispronounce your name. Delineville. Delineville. Please come up, Mr. Jim. Right. That's what I've got. That's the CII. Yes. That's eleven. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, we have Melody Woodworth for 10. Speak on item 10. Hi, good evening. I'm Melody Woodworth with Louisiana Department of Economic Development. Um, here to speak uh, in the absence of a local economic developer. We were working with him before. We worked with all of the local and regional groups around the state. Um, just wanted to start by explaining a little bit in the economic development process, because by the time it comes before you, we're pretty much at the end of the project, a project that we've probably put a couple of years into. As you'll see from the, the number, it, they filed their advance notification in 2018. So we were probably working with them within a, an entire year, can be before that even gets to that point. So along the way, you know, we're, we stay in touch with the company. My, my team within Department of Economic Development is the existing industry team. So we want to make sure that the industries that we have here stay here. And if they have any plans to grow, we want to make sure that that investment stays here and that they do that growing here, whether it's investment, jobs, anything that they have going on, we want to make sure that that stays right here. Um, they have options. They can go to other states. So we come in and try to put together the most attractive package that will offset some of the things that may be more attractive in other states. So we want to try to make sure that we keep that investment coming here because what, you're, what we're talking about is not just a single project because once they stop investing or if they don't get the opportunity to invest again, then it, it has more of a, a slow death that takes place. You know, yes, they don't just pick up and move. Sometimes they do, but you know, that's not the easiest thing to do. But at the same time, they have to do what is best for that company and the most feasible. And if that investment takes place somewhere else, then that investment stops taking place here. And then eventually it becomes obsolete and then they no longer can operate here at all. So when we're talking about over 600 employees, we know that that's something that's very important to this region, and we want to make sure that they stay here and can stay viable here. So what happens within the internal process of LED when an ITEP application or the, um, yeah, when they file their application, they don't have to file it on the front end. The advance notice is filed before a single dollar is spent. So that makes us aware that something is coming, that they're planning on utilizing the program. Uh, when they file their application, that is fully vetted through the department to make sure that they meet all of the requirements of the program. If they don't, it never makes it to the next step before the Commerce and Industry Board. So when it gets to the Commerce and Industry Board, we provide them a community impact analysis that basically says this is how much they are paying, this is what is you're foregoing, and it's only temporarily that you would be foregoing that money in return for that additional investment and additional jobs. So it made it through the LED vetting process. It's made it through the Commerce and Industry Review. And now it comes before you for your vote on that. Um, they have continued to be a good community partner. I noticed coming in today that their name is in front of the, is on the sign of the Civic Center. I know that they have other involvement in the community and he's made his commitment to continue that involvement with the community that he already has and continuing to employ the, the citizens of St. Bernard Parish. So it's really important that we keep them here and keep them as viable as we can. So I just wanted to come up um, in support of the project, knowing that it has met the requirements that the law, the law has and the rules have of the program and that um, they are living up to their end of the bargain and we just want to continue that uh, that partnership with them for years to come. Thank you. Thank you. 
<clears throat> okay, next we have uh, Jimmy Leonard. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jimmy Leonard. I'm with Advantage Consulting. Uh, we were uh, hired by Shalmet Refinery right, I say, August, September timeframe of this past year to assist them with their ITEP application and evaluation of the steps going forward. Uh, for the record, I want everyone to know, as Melody said, the initial paperwork filed with the state occurred in 18, and after going through the process last year, to no avail, part of one of the commentaries was wishing that the application had come sooner. The application deadline for the project in front of y'all tonight is actually not until 90 days after the end of this current project, which is expected to be June of 2020. So if they were to follow the actual rules and guidelines to the letter of the T to as long as they could, the application is really not due and you wouldn't be seeing this until late summer, or early fall. Okay. So we rushed to get the application through the process before the project was completed now the Coker unit, as you all know, they have started operations and working out some kinks, but tying it into the rest of the facility is not yet complete. So we wanted to get the application in front of the various public bodies as quickly as feasible in light of the request to do sooner than later and after the fact. So that's kind of what brought us up here now. Um, a couple of other facts that kind of came out through some of the due diligence and research on this that I just want to put on record and for everyone to understand is yeah, part of the story is, as you heard Steve say, the prior owners had decided to put the plan up for sale. All right, they had decided they had, they had run, their, run their time frame here and were moving on to other pastures. PBF decided that this was a facility that they were willing to take a risk on. They saw opportunities here. They came in, they not only bought it, but they've also sunk hundreds of millions of dollars into this facility to not only just put it back up and running, but to bring it back to life. Various areas of the facility that were previously shut down are now in operation. The projects that came before y'all last year, one of them was a brand new tank. It is storing a tremendous amount of inventory. Y'all are getting more property tax revenue just because that tank exists. What's stored in that tank is taxed, and y'all get a cut from that. The Coker unit, that's going to be producing is going to produce more inventory as well. So you're going to receive, if you approve ITEP, you get 20% off their investment and you get to tax 100% of what they make out of that and store in the facility. So the ITEP is used, the word is an exemption. It's, it's as much of a deferment as it is an exemption because ultimately that money does show up on the tax rolls after a certain period of time. It's more of a delayed investment. It's an investment. The support for ITEP is a decision to support the future because in 11 years from now, this wonderful investment of $155 million goes on the tax rolls, and you get it. It's at a depreciated value, of course, but it's coming. Okay, so every dollar that they spend ultimately lands as money and invested that goes into the parish, whether it's a sales tax or a property tax. One of the most fascinating facts that I found in doing the research here is, now this is just an average, okay? So the average homeowner in St. Bernard Parish pays $500 a year in property tax. For that, they get a great education, they get public safety, they get all the parish services for $500 a year. Now granted, some homeowners are gonna pay more, some are gonna pay less, because this is just an average. In 2018, Shalmet Refinery paid the parish a little over $7 million in property tax. After last year's ITEP denials and the extra inventory that came from the tanks, PBF cut a check for $13 million to the parish. Supporting the investment is clearly evidenced in the extra revenue that the parish received through the inventory. And there was actually an old ITEP that rolled off the exempted rolls and landed on the tax rolls. So, I thought that was, was something that would be of, of interest, that this company is the largest taxpayer in the community. They actually have two employees dedicated full time to servicing the various community needs. You know, I think you all see both of them running around supporting a variety of functions. All right, That's a $300,000 a year budget that they spend here over and above the taxes that they don't have to spend. Okay. Their employees, many of which you are here this evening, 
through the United Way funds contributed over $400,000 of additional contributions for a total of $700,000 because they're here, because the payroll's here, because the people care about where they work and where they live. So this decision here for ITEP, you have a company that came in when things were going down. They have started making money. They started putting an investment to save the number one revenue generator, the number one money maker in this parish is this company from their hard work and their investments. That's what funds the majority of this community. It comes from these guys. And they're investing in you. And they're coming before you for support to continue these investments. Now, this whole ITEP process, these guys are kind of somewhat caught in the transition. There are no rules or regulations here locally when the applications do, what the primary qualification criteria are. There's nothing. There are state guidelines. They follow the state guidelines first time. They kind of followed them at the back end. That was not satisfactory. So they rushed back to you guys to come in earlier this time, knowing that, hey, when we learned that you wanted it sooner, it was already too late for this one. But let's get it into everybody as fast as we possibly can. So they're making the best efforts that they can. And they need your support to continue to make the investments that are going to make an economic difference here in this community. I think many of you probably already know we were not successful earlier today at the council. If not, I, don't want, to, I want to make sure everybody is aware that the Paris Council was not in support of this. But the same plea and the same ask was made. And this is a decision that's before y'all to support the folks who are making a very significant investment in this community and the people that live in this parish. Thank you. All righty, next um, we have Steve Sims. Good evening. I'm, uh, I'm Steve Sims. I'm, uh, Born and raised St. Bernardian. Thanks to this council, mm -hmm. I, uh, I was able to go to a trade school back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. Did the best I could, became the best I could be. And I was one of the very fortunate ones that got a job from one of these companies. And believe me, it's a life changing <coughs> job. There's no doubt about it. Back in those days, I thought I might make 30,000 when I peaked out in retirement. The different story. I'm a maintenance superintendent for this company. And I'm here to ask for the support because I spent 20, my first 30 years with this company being mobile and Exxon Mobil, and I saw not one nickel investment except for EPA driven projects. It means things we were mandated to have to go do. There was no investment. Both those companies were trying to get out of it. Just get out of St. Bernard, get out of the whole Venezuelan deal. I don't know where this refinery would be if PBF wouldn't have picked it up and bought it. But the fact that they picked it up and bought it, and spent the money you've seen them spend here in the last five years is why we have those new jobs in St. Bernard. I have four kids here and ten grandkids, and I sure like to be able to see them have that opportunity. And the only way they're going to have it is with continued growth. We've been on a slippery slide to then continue to decline for 30 years in St. Bernard. We lost Kaiser. We lost the nickel plant. We don't want to lose. This is somebody willing to invest and grow in St. Bernard. So I'm pleading with you in St. Bernard Parish employee of the company and resident, let's keep this growth going. We've got a company here that's willing to provide that growth, willing to invest in us. Let's show these guys, show us, show me some support to keep it going. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. <clears throat> Okay, next we have to speak on item 10, and she wants to speak on 11. So, Maggie, if you want to come on up. And my comments for both will be mostly the same. So, um, uh, I'm Maggie Rustal. I'm the president of the St. Bernard Association of Educators. Um, I'd like to thank you all for giving me the opportunity to speak and thank um, the people we've heard from the refineries for giving us insight into their perspective. Um, the decision regarding the tax exemption tonight comes down to who will benefit the most from these funds, um, the refineries or the school community. Um, last year, this board made the decision that the school community would see the greatest benefit regarding these funds, and they were right. Um, thanks in part to these funds, the school board was able to afford raises 
um, in the amount of $2,600 for teachers, $1,600 for 12-month support staff, and $1,300 for 9-month support staff. Um, these raises have made the salaries for a St. Bernard Parish School Board employee competitive with our surrounding parishes, which is a necessity um, in recruiting and retaining um, effective and hardworking teachers. Um, Recruiting and retaining the best the field of education has to offer is an incredibly important step in ensuring that every one of the students in our schools has access to a rigorous and quality education with a knowledgeable and experienced staff. Through the allocation of these tax dollars towards our teachers and support staff, this board has shown that they understand and are committed to providing each of our students with the very best. Um, in addition to these raises, these funds would also be beneficial in continuing to provide each of our students with state-of-the-art technology. We know that this is important to provide our students with a rich education and experience in the fields they could someday make their careers. Beginning in third grade, all students in every school across the parish is provided access to technology at a one-to-one -one ratio, which enables teachers to prepare lessons that can be extended for students needing extra rigor and scaffolded for students who need extra support. Every dollar counts when making these commitments to the students of our school, and this is yet another reason our school community has so much to benefit from these tax dollars. Um, Mr. England, as you said earlier, we are here to benefit our children. Um, and the last time this decision came before the board, the board decided that our school community would benefit the most from this money. On behalf of the educators and support staff that I represent as president of the St. Bernard Association of Educators, some of who are also here today. Um, I'm asking that you reaffirm that decision that was made last year and vote against the tax exemption so we can continue to be a parish competitive in salary for our employees and in opportunities for our children of our community. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. Um, that was all the um, speakers who had signed up. Is there an, anyone else that would like to speak at this time before we have discussion who may have come in a little late and didn't fill out a card? Okay. Okay. Sure. Come on up. And just to address some of the issues that came up in that and to make sure that there's a an equitable weighing of the of both sides of that um, and as far as who benefits the most well that's going to depend on if you're talking about today or talking about 10 20 years from now because um, this isn't taking money out of the school system budget because this money doesn't yet exist there so that would what you currently enjoy continues. That doesn't take away any of the money. In fact, you will be getting additional money. That's the 20% that comes into it immediately. What we're asking is that, that deferment of the additional funds. And with that, it's not, like I said earlier, it's not just about this project, but it's the potential investment in the future as these other parts are modernized and brought online. It makes the plant more viable for future investment. So we're not talking about just today's investment, but also please asking you to look for 10, 20 years in the future, which we hope they remain viable here in the community for that long. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any other speakers at this time? Okay. Okay, so the, at this time we will um, have discussion of the um, exemption. Mr. England. Yes, thank you, Ms. Dysart. Um, First of all, I want to thank Chairman Refiner to get given all this information that I read over the over the weekend, the last couple of weeks, and uh, it's quite a bit of good information. And uh, but we have our information also, you know, from the school system. And we talk about investments before. Well, our investments is in our children. Okay. Now we get three forms of income from our, our schools for our school system. One is the MFP, one is the millages, and one is sales tax. We don't get anything else, okay? So we have to go out. We have to go out for a millage to get extra income if we got to obtain or retain uh, personnel from our school system. So right now, my problem with granting this tech, this uh, exemption is that if we go out for the, a millage and we give you the, the exemption, the first thing the public, the residents, going to say. 
you had opportunity. Why didn't you take that mm -hmm. opportunity when it was there? You know, so put it like this, we can lose both ways. All right, so that's where my problem lies at. So I'm not gonna be in support of it, you know, of the uh, tax exemption at this time, unless somebody can change my mind. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you, Mr. England. Do you wanna put, put a motion on the floor at this time? Yeah, I'd like to put a motion on the floor that we uh, deny that request for the um, exemption. Okay, there's a motion to deny the um, exemption. Uh, of the industrial tax exemption application 201-80237. There's a second by Ms. Jackson. Okay, further discussion. Any any other discussion? Well, uh, I, 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 okay, no. I'll yield to you, Mr. Long. Um, just like to say, um, I think every member of the board would, would like to keep supporting uh, Shalmet Refining and, and these other uh, multi-million dollar corporations. But, um, you know, we've been looking at the figures and I think over the last four years, we estimated that we exempted $14 million from our school system. This was St. Bernard Parish taxpayers. Yeah, at one time, we never had the uh, decision to make, but um, our first priority, like Mr. England uh, related to, is the school system itself. And so the way I look at it, we've supported you as long as we could, but uh, we need the funds, it's as simple as that. Um, this parish is growing. Um, it's a possibility we may have to build some new schools, maybe even a new high school. Uh, and if we have to replace what we have at Shellman High School, uh, we're talking about a lot of money. And we'd, and we'd have to go out for millage to the taxpayers. Um, and no one's going to help us with that ex except the taxpayers. Um, the state's not going to help us. You, as you can see, they, they did increase the MFP last year, but that was the first time in 10 years. And I think they gave us $46, I'm sorry, $51 per student, which is nothing. Um, so like I said, uh, my first priority is the, uh, is the school system. Even though we'd love to be able to continue helping uh, industry, I think we helped you over the past years. And these exemptions have been going on for 30, probably 30, 40 years. That's a long time. If, if we exempted $14 million in four years, I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't want to know what the uh, exemptions were over 30 to 40 years. It's a lot of money. And uh, it's just a matter of dollars. And we don't have the dollars. We are, we are the largest employee in St. Bernard with about 1,000 employees. And we, we have a budget of about $70 million. But we're a nonprofit, and like was mentioned earlier, we, we have limited resources. So uh, I'm going to have to agree with, uh, with, Smith, with Mr. England that uh, I won't be able to support this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Long. Anyone else? OK, um, I, I have a few. A few things I'd like to say. Um, first of all, I appreciate everyone coming tonight and all the speakers who came before us. We appreciate it. And um, you know, we we have. Um, I think this whole board has been looking at numbers and crunching and and getting numbers up until right before the meeting. <clears throat> I was still asking Mr. Fernandez for some figures. And um, you know, this decision does not is not an easy one because we do appreciate Chalmette refining. We do. 
we appreciate you know seeing them in the schools and uh, promoting um, some of our uh, programs terrific kid and some other programs that they, they do um, they're good partners you know however as it was stated before um, these exemptions have gone on for several years and the local school systems have not had an opportunity to even know or see what the exemptions have been in the past and they've been numerous and I, I did get some fig you know and on, on that same note we want y'all to stay here we don't want to see you go to other places because um, I, I was doing some research and I, I see that you just bought another refinery in California and you know you um, and, and y'all are doing well you're the fourth largest um, refinery correct Mr. Correct. okay so so we do want to want you to stay here and I know Stevie Sims for a long time and his family and we do want our employees to 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 live here and work here and I know we asked some questions at the meeting um, as far as how many residents are from St. Bernard and I think there were only 20 percent of your total po uh, population of employees is that not correct? That's correct okay and and you gave us your promise at that meeting that you were going to as your, a new refinery manager, you were going to uh, make sure that you were going to try to hire some some local people, and and you know, and we appreciate that. We we truly do, and um, you know, we appreciate your your candidness, your openness, and and we do appreciate that. But in the past um, several years, starting with with 2016, and I realize y'all acquired it um, right before that. There was, and this is just the school board taxes. This isn't the total, but there were uh, um, school board taxes exempted with um, 2.1 million. In 2017, the exemptions were 2.1 million, just for the school system. In 2018, the numbers were 2.1 million, and in 2019, the numbers for the school board are 1.4 million. So that's a uh, almost eight million dollars right there mm -hmm. from the schools for just for the school system and then of course when you add you know the sheriff's office and the council that it's more um, again you know we appreciate I know that that y'all do contribute and you're great business partners and we, we appreciate that greatly but um, you know it, it's just such a huge source of, um, of revenue that we can foresee for the betterment of our employees, but more importantly, our students. And, um, you know, just looking at it and, you know, we know the legislature might even make some changes, unfortunately, we, who knows, you know, but, you know, the exemption that, that you know, you're asking for is, is a substantial amount. And, um, you know, it's a, in a 10 year period, and this is just for the public's knowledge, in a 10 year period, this exemption would be $6.3 million. And that's just a, a difficult thing to, 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 you know, to grasp. And, you know, uh, in meeting with the superintendent and others, you know, we even said, well, it's for 10 years, so is there any way maybe the first five years we can grant it or, you know, we don't grant it and then, you know, we see that they're continuing to grow in St. Bernard Parish and doing all the positive things, you know, for the parish, and um, and show the economic development, and and then you know, granted the next five years, and we were told no. I even asked Mr. Boche to make some additional calls, to, and you know, it's an 80-20 split, and you know, right now, and, and y'all do pay the 20 percent, and this exemption would then exempt the 80 percent. So just for those listening out there. But we were told there was, it's either all or nothing. And, you know, we were, you know, I think all of us wanted to show that we want you to stay here and we want economic development to be in St. Bernard Parish. But this is just, you know, this exemption is, is just, uh, uh, you know, a large number. And we have so many needs in our system for our employees and for our students. So um, that is, that's my thoughts. And again, you know, we do appreciate um, all of your your efforts to be a good community member. So, um, is is there anyone else um, that wants to speak on the from the board at this time? Okay. Hey, may I have one moment? Sure. 
if you have something else that because sure. let me tell you uh, you know this yeah. has been a difficult decision uh, it's I, not an easy decision to make for any of us and it, we look, want you know I we want economic development but we also need to be objective too you know and do what's best for our schools we've been doing this around the state and it's a very difficult decision for mm -hmm. everyone so i sincerely respect the position each and every one of y'all are in and the decision that you have to make um, two things that have been very difficult to i would say properly articulate and quantify through the whole process is and y'all are probably more knowledgeable about this than i am when the exemption is not granted, it is not an immediate cash infusion, okay? What, what that means is the property that they invested in is going to get reported to the tax assessor as taxable as opposed to exempt. It's just like we're going to go through in 2020, the assessor is going to re-evaluate everybody's homes, okay? So when everybody's homes get reassessed, it doesn't mean that you get a cash infusion because the property values of the parish went up. It just means that the amount of property that can be taxed went up and the tax rate effectively would go down to give you the same amount of money. So what happens in this arena is the tax base goes up when you deny the exemption. So your millage rate's gonna go down and I presume y'all have had meetings where you have to roll millages forward, all right? So ultimately what happens in these exemption scenarios is they're going to report the coker and all of its ancillary assets as taxable okay in this specific circumstance they had about 115 million that went into service in 2019 so on january 1 it's taxable they'll give it to the assessor on april 15 and then you would find based upon all the budgetary submissions the tax millage rate will get set and then y'all will have your public meeting to decide what to do about roll forward rights that you have so there is a decision every taxpayer in the parish gets a tax break until the roll forward to occur at the various public bodies so I mean that that is the formal process so it's been very difficult to articulate and the exemptions it's so hard to have that conversation you know councilman long is who knows what those roll forwards would have been over time okay I mean that the numbers are assuming the millage rate today and they're assuming, and none of those numbers that LED puts out, no offense, Melody, include the depreciation of value of the asset over time. So there, there's, there's, it's the best information available, so that's what people get to, get to use, but in the actual practice of everything, it is, the true loss would have been, did the roll forwards occur? Maybe they did. Maybe just a partial roll forward occurred. What was lost was the option of increasing the tax base and have that decision more than a true actual dollar amount. And that's been very, very difficult to quantify. Um, and in terms of you know, the overall exemption side of things, even at 100% exempt, which is what they had in place when they made their decision to buy PBF. They did it in 2015. Executive order came out in 2016. Chalmette Refinery still found a way to be your number one revenue generator, the number one contributor to the economics of this community. So at 80%, I mean, this is me coming in from out of town, I'm sorry I'm not from here, but even at 80%, you're starting to get more than you ever got. So if they got the number one at 100%, I'm confident that stay number one at 80% and even be producing more revenue for you guys. But again, I. I respect y'all's positions our like, teachers association you know y'all have everybody's got financial responsibilities fiscal responsibilities and so forth and here this company wants to keep investing in this community and at some point i'm just going to be the the real candid person here they're going to need to know their investments are welcome and supported because they have other options and you know i shared this with the council earlier General Motors and Shreveport, 2013. Who'd have thought General Motors, after making a $2 billion investment, five years later would turn around and walk away? I mean, that's the bedrock of the community. They shut it down. Right now, I'm, in, I'm from Baton Rouge, in East Baton Rouge Parish, Zachary, Georgia Pacific, is closing down one of its main facilities. They had losing 700 jobs at the main Georgia Pacific facility because of economics. 
because of financial decisions. Just because you see somebody every day, these companies are, are under forces, just as y'all are for your own economic needs, that are contracting on them, that are sometimes outside of their control. Right now, these folks have the ability to make decisions. They want to spend money. The more money they spend here, the more money comes to this community. And you can see it in the sales tax numbers. You said you get money from sales tax revenue. You get that immediately. There's no exemption from their sales tax dollars on every dollar that they spend that's taxable. And uh, some of the other questions were, where do they spend their money? It really doesn't matter from sales tax. Whatever they buy, Nebraska, Colorado, China, Belgium, if it lands in this parish, they pay the sales tax on it. So the more they bring it in, the more they're investing, the more sales tax you come in. The property tax, you get 20% for 10 years, and then you get a balloon payment. And as Ms. Melody was saying, it's an investment in your future. You don't lose, you're just waiting for the balloon payment. You're getting a little bit over time and you're getting a balloon at the end. So I appreciate the opportunity to allow me to come back. I uh, really do. And I wish you all luck with your decision. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Are there, um, is there any other discussion or any other questions? Um, I, I just want to clarify what oh, you said, Jimmy. I'm um, sorry, sure. Oh, I just <clears throat> to ask you a question. Sure. But Summit Refining is only get, being taxed on 15%, correct? On only that value. Okay, so the way property tax works is when you put, let's say, yeah. you, let's use 100 million because I can't do right. math in my head real well. I hate no, to say that. No, but it's 15 percent of the assessed but, value, correct? Yes, ma'am. So a 100 okay, million dollar all. investment gets taxed at 15 million dollars okay. times the times the millage rate. Right, 15 percent. Right. Okay. That's right. 15 yes, percent times the millage rate. Right. That is correct. Okay. Thank you very much. And those assessed yeah. values depreciate over. Well, they depreciate. Less each year. Okay, but homestead exemptions don't depreciate. No, okay. No. <laughs> okay. Um, and I, I just wanted to just uh, make a final statement on, um, you know, the te on our teachers and retaining our, our good teachers. You know, we were able to give uh, a raise to them, a, a sorely needed raise that, you know, we were very, very happy to give. We have excellent teachers here and personnel, and we want to see them stay here too because they are dedicated also. And, um, you know, we, we hope to continue to give them the raises they so dearly, um, they so need, and um, so that we can keep the ones we have here and then also attract the new teachers into our system. And of course, we do know that there is a shortage of teachers in the state of Louisiana. So we want more um, young people to go into education so they can come back and, and teach in our community. So, and we appreciate all of our teachers for being here tonight, too. Okay, any other discussion? Mr. Long. One brief question, uh, or clarification. Um, and maybe Ms. Boche, our in-house mathematician, can <laughs> clear it up for me. Uh, I'll try. Uh, I don't know the gentleman's last name, but Jimmy, I think is his name. He, he said that um, these, by, by denying app, uh, exemptions such as this, it doesn't have an immediate effect. But it sure seemed like it had an immediate effect um, the last time we denied an exemption. We were able at least in part to use some of that added revenue from uh, declining uh, the exemption to fund the uh, pay raises that we gave. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they help fund the pay raise. I think what you were referring to in reassessment years, when these properties then would go on if the exemption is denied at their assessed values, it would raise the assessments parish-wide, which then the assessor would come in and um, reduce millages to revenue neutral, at which point then you would have to make some decision as to whether we would roll forward to recapture the millage itself. Mm -hmm. So all of that is very, very intricate. You know, I know this, like you said, this is a <coughs> extremely difficult and difficult decision. I know when you research or look around the country, there are many states, there are many places where you don't have these discussions in school systems because school systems in some areas are not in the mix with the exemptions. They may be exempt from other local 
governmental bodies, but the school taxes are paid in many cases. But when you try to compare state to state across the country, tax structures within individual states are so different. So while you may look at school taxes here, then you've got inventory, you've got all kinds of other ways that taxes are assessed. So it's very, very difficult to make those types of comparisons. You look at homeowners, we may have a $75,000 exemption, um, a homestead exemption. In another state, it may be $25,000. In another state, it might not be any. So it's, it's very difficult as you cross boundaries to take a look at these things. I guess one of the advantages of being one of the older people, um, I don't know, sitting around this table, <laughs> or being in the school system now for 49 years, going on 50, we can go back to when um, the community prior to the storm and the refineries and, and the larger businesses employed a great, great many of our residents within St. Bernard Parish. At that point, we had so many tradesmen who lived here. We had a very blue collar, um, tradesman oriented uh, community. So the number of employees that were actually employed by the refiners was far in excess of the percentage, far in excess, excess of what it is, you know, what it is today. Um, I wish that the way this was set up, the structure from the state that would allow a little bit more negotiation, that it would not be something as cut and dry as 80-20 or nothing. Um, and I think that there's so much talk around the state right now that that may be coming, some type of let's look at this program again and see what we can do that can accommodate uh, the businesses and accommodate the local municipalities. There's a lot of discussion about pushing more services to be funded at the local level rather than the state level. You know, like when we're talking about taxes where they, they're, um, the school taxes aren't exempt, whereas the other governmental bodies are. There's a provision in Texas where you can do a little negotiation to bring new business in that school systems can, but then they're made whole by the state. So it's a whole different dynamic here. Um, I, I listen to our teachers' organization, and we are faced with, we are geographically isolated here. In order for us to attract and retain excellent teachers, then our pay has to be at least competitive, but hopefully above some of what you can get in the surrounding areas. The technology that Ms. Roussel brought up um, is very important in the learning process. The early childhood education, which is now a statewide initiative that we're asking everyone in this, around the state to help make that a priority, we get no funding through the MFP for any of our four-year-old programs at all. So local monies, we are having to finance that program for, for our students. So that pull and tug, we, we want investment within the community. You know, Chalmette Refining has been a wonderful partner. We would, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear, you know, from Mr. Krasinski that you know, if, if we can find a way, I think, in all of us working together for the future, uh, the training facilities that we have at Nunez are excellent. Working together to do the training necessary of our local people to then begin to be hired by the companies in all positions, operators as well as office staff and whatever. And while we may realize, say, sales taxes, even if something is bought out of state, you know, the, the multiplier effect of monies going into your community from payrolls and such, if the people aren't living in the community, that money's going to other communities possibly within the state or neighboring state. But for it to be then reinvested in businesses within St. Bernard is, is essential to, to the growth and development. So what I'm hoping, regardless of how this vote comes out, is that that partnership would continue to develop and expand to where we can feel confident that the citizens of St. Bernard then are being employed, that money is being spent for small business companies within St. Bernard, 
and that those um, dollars, you know, are being retained. While we would love to share with Orleans and St. Tammany and Jefferson and all the other areas that our people may live, we are most, um, I guess, interested in what is happening within St. Bernard Parish as well. So I know it's a very, very difficult decision. And whichever way it goes, I'm hoping that in the future we can grow those concepts here so that maybe it'll be much easier to do this and at the state level give us a little bit more latitude to negotiate something that is not quite as cut and dry as this would be. Thank you, Ms. Oche. I, I think uh, you are correct. I, I, I think the, uh, the legislature is going to probably do a lot of tweaking this coming session to help the businesses and industry. Um, but we have to we have to worry about our own um, school system and and our employees because if the state decides to cut any of our funding, we may have to end up cutting programs or laying off employees, and we don't want to do that. Um, and we want to we want to keep salaries of teachers and and all of our employees, our support people also. Um, as high as we can do it. But thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Long. Anyone else at this time? Okay. There being no further discussion, we will vote on the um, consideration of the industrial tax exemption and the motion on the floor before us tonight is that we do not, we deny the tax, ex uh, industrial tax exemption Two zero one eight zero two three seven. Okay. Um, at this time, please cast your votes. Motion passes nine zero. Okay. Again, we we thank everyone for coming tonight. We appreciate it, and um, you know we appreciate all of your comments. Okay. Thank you very much. And now we will move to the next item agenda, consideration of industrial tax exemption application 201-90275. Okay. Uh, we have tonight to come speak before us, before us is Jimmy Delineville. Hi. Thank you for your time. Uh, I know. <laughs> I know I can't stand here and change your mind. Uh, I do appreciate the, the, the position you're in and the effort you give to it and what you do for kids. Uh, my daughter's a teacher and my grandkids go to school. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not in St. Bernard, but they do. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that uh, you, you can ask any questions about our company. Uh, we're Rain Carbon, uh, formerly Kaiser, been in Chalmette for, uh, since the 50s. We're just a small unit that survived. Um, so we have about 50 employees. Um, and this project uh, adds 16 employees. Uh, as an industry, uh, Melody represents us. If you want her to repeat what she said, she'd be glad to, but I don't mm -hmm. think we need to go through that. And also, uh, Jimmy is a representative for our company. Now, the numbers on the way, near the numbers he talked about with um, with um, PDF. So it's about the same, it's just smaller. You know, we're a smaller company, you know, we paid less tax than they paid and all that stuff. But it's all the same. Um, but the tax exemption that we ask for is a lot less because it's a lot less invested and a lot smaller company. If you want Jimmy to talk about that, I'm sure he can. If you want to hear the numbers, uh, he's, he's here for that. Again, appreciate all of, you know all what you do for kids and uh, and, and teachers. Um, this law, when you know when it went into effect, I said, man, I'm glad I'm not on the school board. I'm <laughs> glad I'm not on the parish council, and I'm glad I'm not the sheriff because <laughs> he don't have this group here to vote for. <laughs> you know, but hopefully, uh, hopefully, legislature uh, fix it. Um, you know, it's um, it's 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 just uh, it's something that we're gonna have to do like we like you know like Louisiana always does. It's, you know, take our way out of it and and, uh, and, and fix it. Um, along with uh, with the refinery, we appreciate all you do for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Jimmy, did you want to speak on this one? Not 
Yeah, if you got any questions for him, we know what the numbers, but if not, okay. it's basically the same. I have uh, a question for the gentleman. Okay. Uh, Wait, before we go on what? to questions, oh, okay. is any, did anyone else want to speak on this issue? I wanted okay. to say I believe you also had the community impact analysis from the department mm -hmm. on rain as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, so you yes have we that. did. Yes, we did. Thank you. Okay. okay, I'm sorry. Mr. Long. Yes, I have a question. I, yes. You said you, your business has been in operation since the 50s, is that correct? Well, the, the, the rain carbon facilities are the carbon divisions of Kaiser. Uh, Kaiser, right. Uh, so okay. Kaiser. Right. When Kaiser left Gramercy, it left just a carbon plant. When Kaiser left Chalmette, it left just a carbon plant. And in um, 1988, we bought, well, they bought us. I was already a Kaiser employee. We was bought by a company out of Switzerland. And then in, um, 2000, in 2006, our present owners uh, bought us uh, Rain and it's an Indian company. But all of the carbon divisions and all the carbon plants that we own in Louisiana, except for Lake Charles, are uh, are the final uh, units that survive from Kaiser. Now the plant in Kaiser, the, the Kaiser plant in Kaiser is still operation. They're sold to uh, Noranda. Uh, Noranda Aluminum runs the Kaiser plant, unlike this Kaiser plant that just completely shut down. You said you have about 50 employees, is that correct? We have 50 employees here, hourly and salary. Have you, uh, I'm sure you've, your company's enjoyed some exemptions over the years that was okayed by the uh, group in Baton Rouge? LED, uh, you may have some information. Uh, yeah, we have it. I don't know if I can answer those questions specifically, yeah. but yes, we have assisted them with prior uh, property tax exemption requests. Uh, the point I wanted was going to make, if Jimmy could maybe help me with some of the, the background here, is is rain as as with PDF has other facilities, and they have other facilities here in Louisiana as well. And what they recently encountered was a, a change in their market on the product that they were selling. They saw a plant in Arkansas that had the ability that was shut down that had the ability to assist them in getting into this opportunity. You know, when they looked around the state as to where they would put this investment, they chose this community. So they had, they had options, they had other facilities, they chose the Chalmette refinery for their facility, and not, not the Chalmette refinery, but they, they chose this location Next to, to make the investment, <laughs> to add the jobs, and to put this new operation into service and make a new product in order to service the market, correct? Yeah, yeah. The, pro the, the product we produce, um, we start with the, uh, the coke from the petrochemical coca units. Uh, some of those coca units make a few grade coke, some make anode grade coke. We purchase the anode grade coke and, and calcite <laughs> is actually burn it up to 2,700 degrees and almost to a pure carbon. To take that and make an anode, it's like a big battery, and use it in a smelter to produce aluminum. Over the years, the quality, because the refineries, you know, are, are hiring more and more and more educated engineers, because the school systems get better, 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 and better, better. So the quality of the coke, which is their waste, is getting worse and worse and worse and worse. So um, the density is a problem for the uh, the smelters that's making aluminum. So we. Uh, <coughs> We found this plant that was uh, making pellets out of uh, bauxite for the uh, fracking industry. And then the fracking industry fell out on them in 2014. And they went down for turn around and shut it down and walked away from it. Um, so we thinking we can, all the equipment's almost in. Uh, we are delayed. I think we probably won't start producing until maybe uh, September, October. Uh, we're going to uh, pelletize the fine uh, product of the coal, which now burns up in the kiln uh, and goes off into the stack and we scrub it because it's making SO2. And we just put that $20 million scrub in 2015 to help get this, our share of the fight to help get the, uh, the parish entertainment, we was able to do that. Um, so we're going to pelletize these, 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 this, this fine, they won't burn off, so less SO2 less that we have to scrub because we're already scrubbing to, 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 to our needs. Uh, and it's going to increase the density in the 
coke that we sell into the smelters, uh, hopefully we can keep making aluminum in the, in the world. Because the density of the coke is just, the coke we're using today that we call uh, the best coke in the world to make aluminum is stuff that they used to call fuel grade and when I started working in 1977. So that's, but that's because of education, because the engineers got smarter and then they made the waste more and more and more waste. And you know, the refinery can tell you that uh, what they produce out of those coke is it's nothing like it used to be. It always was trash to them. When I started working in Narco, they gave it to us. Shell, Shell, Shell all gave it to us because it was the waste product of the plant. When they found out that, you know, how much money people was making with it, now we're paying, depending on the quality, hundreds of dollars a ton. I just want to give you a little you know, background on our, on our plant. Uh, well, you know, another thing about this process, putting these plant, you know, putting this, these, these on the agenda together like this, uh, you know, and you got multi-million dollar companies, and then, you know, and then you're talking to, you know, somebody with, with a lot less, uh, you know, you put me in front of them, uh, you know, you might feel sorry for us because we small and, you know, so, so now everybody's jockeying how we're going to schedule us and all that, you know, that's where Jimmy and them coming at. So, yeah, I'm sure they're going to tweak this some kind of way and get it fixed and, we, you know, we look forward to working with you. Well, you know, as you alluded to earlier, it's a tough vote for all of us Absolutely. around this board. Absolutely. And we, we want to help all our industries, you know, especially the smaller ones. But uh, like I said, our first priority has to be our school system. And hopefully uh, maybe the state will make some changes and, and uh, it'll help, it'll help uh, your industry and, and everybody yeah. else. Yeah. That's what we're hoping for. Yeah, we totally agree with that. And, and, and I'm telling Jimmy, you know, this, 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 this business is not ours. He knows those are guys I got to, like if I was a school board member, I'd be just like you. <laughs> <laughs> I want all them millions. You know, but when you talk to, when you talk to the people that's in, in that business and in that world, and they explain it to you, you know, and you, you start to understand it. So that's where the state got to get. Right. You know, it's just, right. this is our first one. Right. You know, that's, that's our first one. We didn't, know what we, we didn't know what to expect. We was told that we came in too late. Uh, you know, I'm thinking well, we, have, we don't have a chance after I hear the way it works. And then after talking to Jimmy and I understand, you know, we got a lot, a lot of people that's involved in, in, in this process in this state on all levels got a lot of learning, a lot, a lot of learning to do so we can make sure we get this fixed. It's just a mis there's so many people misunderstand. I got my opinion about it after talking with Jimmy. Y'all got your opinion about it. You know, we just got to get on the same page eventually. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions you, or comments at this time? I have a couple. Yes. Just, okay, so you have 50 employees. Yes, ma'am. And, and this new project is going to create how 16. many new jobs? 16. 16. New jobs? Okay. All right. And in looking at the tax exemptions in the past years, rain has also benefited from some exemptions um, at 16 from the school board's point of view. It was 22, almost 23,000. 17 was 23,000. And then 18 was 21, and then 19 was 119,000. That that y'all got the benefit uh, of, and um, and I, I, I we have, I think we all appreciate your um, your um, talking about education and appreciating education. And you said you have a daughter that's a teacher, so you know the teachers. You know, started they they. Well, I'm on TV. And my daughter watches TV, and I'm <laughs> sure I don't see that. Video. <laughs> <laughs> Try to take anything away from the teachers. There. <laughs> the I have one daughter and I love her a lot, and she's not going to catch me saying anything about teachers. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anyway, and, and my thought is just, you know, out of consistency, you know, um, you know, for our school system, we, we have to be concerned about our students and our personnel. And um, so, I'm in agreement. Well, I don't think we have a motion on the floor, though, huh? Okay, is there a motion? Mr. Long, do you have a motion to make? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion that we deny the uh, industrial tax exemption for application number 20190275. Okay, there's a motion by Mr. Long. Is there a second? second. Okay, Mr. Campbell seconds it. Okay, any further discussion or questions? 
Okay, there being none, please cast your votes. Motion passes 9 0. <clears throat> and thank you, Mr. Delinaville. Villa. We appreciate you coming tonight. Okay, next item on the agenda or items to be placed on the agenda of the next committee meeting. Okay. And y'all can always add that to the agenda prior to the next meeting. Okay, superintendent's uh, recommendations. Uh, nothing. Uh, we've uh, just had a good opening for our second semester. Uh, other than that, we have nothing else tonight. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Voce. Is there a, 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 a um, motion to adjourn? Motion by Mr. Campbell, second by Ms. Um, Aceveda. Any discussion? There being none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 The meeting is now adjourned. Thank you and good night.